Hello everyone and welcome to Overexposed, a BWRM podcast where we delve into the ins and outs of running a real estate photography and videography business. My name is Dave Temple. And my name is Jackie Kirk. Today's episode is part two of a five-part series on the pillars that form BWRM. We're often asked what exactly it is that BWRM does for creatives. It's a big question with a long answer, so we've broken it down into our five pillars. Product, portal, people, process, and pathway. Try to say that five times quickly. In part one, we discussed our product and why outsourcing your editing is crucial if you want to grow a sustainable business. Today, Guy is back to talk to us about pillar number two, process. Hello again, Guy, and thank you for joining us. Hello. Thank you for having me. So process, can you explain what BWRM offers under this pillar? Yeah, so um, like all pillars, they sort of seem to be linked. So the point of process um, is to help you get down your pathway and also to get you a better product. So the the idea is that when you approach a job, um, whether it be photography, floor plans, videography, flying a drone, you approach it really consistently. Um, and the reason you approach it consistently is then that will provide you with consistent result, which then allows our retouchers, editors, et cetera, to, to get a really consistent product. And it basically saves time and effort all the way through if you've got a really consistent process. So, Guy, when you talk about process, are you exclusively talking about how we shoot photos, videos and draw floor plans or is there more to our processes? Uh, no, look, the processes are, are across the board, obviously. So everything that that you do in a business that you need to train other people to do or want to train other people to do, you have to put a process around. Um, it's no good. I don't know if you, I use this analogy a bit, but I don't know if you've ever been into a cafe and um, had really bad service. It's pretty much always, if you have a good look, a lack of process. Nobody knows exactly what they should be doing at any given time. So you end up with an inefficient um, experience. You end up with up unhappy customers and you and you don't end up with a result that you could easily end up with is if you knew all your staff knew exactly what they needed to be doing at any given time. So um, in particular, what we offer is really consistent and clear methods when you're on site for capture. Um, but we also um, follow that all the way through to sales, you know. So so if you're um, approaching an agency to to build a relationship and, and win their business, you know, you want to approach that in a really consistent and clear way and really understand what you're doing, why you're doing it and when you should be doing it and something else. So really what we're talking about is you've looked at how you've obviously been in this business a long time and you've looked at from start to finish, the sales process, the shooting, capture process, how that gets sent off, how it gets edited, how it comes back and how you deal with changes. So it's really from pretty much sale, first point of contact to delivery of finished product, you've developed a process for every step of the way. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. And and the idea of that um, is not to not to turn everybody into a robot, right? It's it's actually to provide space for people to, you know, bring their personality more, spend more time being creative because they don't need to work. They they're really confident and clear on what they need to be doing. Um, so they're not just shooting by the by or shooting from the hip, I should say. So they're not just shooting from the hip or flying by the seat of their pants. You know, they, they're here, they know what they've got to do, and then they can do it. They can then do it confidently. They can then relax. They can then have, you know, great conversations or spend more time, you know, trying to be creative um, because they're not worried, hey, will I be able to, will I actually be able to deliver on what I've come here to deliver on today? I guess it also takes advantage of our other pillar, which we'll talk about in another podcast, which is people. And one of the big advantages of BWM is that collectively with, you know, around 30 businesses currently running, that's a lot of years of experience. That's a lot of people who've been able to figure out what the best method is and and then fine-tune it into one that works. So if you've never shot real estate photography before, 
and you're doing this in your art on your own, you can come in and you can figure it out and you can make mistakes along the way and it's going to take you a lot longer to get to that point or you can kind of dial into, you know, collective decades of experience and knowledge and go straight to the finish point and know exactly how to do it the way that it works. Yeah, and look, that's a really important point. So so if you're running a business, um, you know, and the way we operate is that business would be near where you live. Right, we we recognise that's the most efficient place to build your business. Um, so around where you live, there's a finite number of clients out there, right? There's plenty. There's plenty to build a great big business, but there's a finite number. So if you go in day one and you get lucky and you get a shoot on your very first day, you know you've you've happened to say the right thing and they like you and that's all good, and then you stuff it up when it comes to doing the shoot you're probably not going to get a chance for a very, very long time to stuff it up again. Um, Not with that client anyway. So your learning curve is very unforgiving. So if you started with an agency that was the closest to where you live and spiralled out, you might work through 10 before you actually are getting close to having a process that's going to give them a consistent result and give you the confidence that you can deliver a consistent result. Um, so yeah, so so I think yeah, it's really important for for a new business, and then it's equally important for a bigger business. So when when you're a new business, it's just you. But when you might want to bring on a contractor, you know, you need to give that person role clarity, and they really need to understand what they need to be doing on site. Um, and it will really help not only help you to learn really quickly, but it'll help them to learn and add value to your business really quickly. So it really shortens the training period. Because you can you can break, particularly the capture methods, you know the, the processes that we do on site, really breaks them down into really easy to understand chunks um, that are easy to learn. Just going back a, a, a slight step, if someone brand new is coming on board to the business, um, they've not been involved in real estate photography or potentially photography before. Um, do you want to outline what? you know, what we uh, provide in terms of training, what we provide in terms of manuals and what we've done. So what do they know, what do they need to know before they come on board? Right. So so as people will know by now, we're for the creative first. That doesn't mean you're a photographer and that doesn't mean you've got experience in shooting real estate. Um, So we're expecting people to be camera ready when they come. So they'll have the gear that they need, you know, the professional gear that they need and we can, we have all that stuff listed. Um, then what we do is we have composition guide. So we've broken down exactly what the requirements are for architectural photography. And I say architectural photography because we're shooting houses, we're shooting for real estate, and we are actually, it's a product, but at the end of the day, the principles of architectural photography apply to real estate photography if done well. Um, so we give that composition. It's really clear, foundational. It explains what to do, why to do it, and and gives you examples of what's correct and what's incorrect and why. So somebody can read that straight away and understand that. Um, then then we move to sort of a camera setting phase. Um, then there's maps on where to be in a property, what you need to do, um, you know, to cover a property effectively. Um, there's time management for twilight shooting, etc. cetera. Um, so what we'll do is we'll provide you all the materials. We'll show you exactly what to do, all the settings, the whole lot. Um, what, what we don't do is we don't put people into a big paid training program. Um, we like to leverage wherever possible, and it does, it's not always possible in a big country like Australia, but um, wherever possible we'd like to pair somebody up with the closest member. Um, so they can watch. So once they've learned, they've got this foundational understanding of what they're supposed to be doing and why, they can go out with that photographer and, and learn. They can watch, ask as many questions as they need to, which is invaluable. And that's not something that any of the members charge. I mean, I remember um, Neil sort of referring to it as a bit of a uh, this Neil Cash from It's All About the Cash uh, episode. Um, he was talking about it in in terms of a pay it forward sort of mentality where, you know, Andy helped him, he'll help the next person, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, and it's part of that supportive um, people pillar that we have that we're going to talk about at another point. So realistically, you can come, be camera ready, follow the guides, um, 
you know, leverage the community. Um, and then through the new member workshops, Dave, that, that you hold, which is, again, that sits as, as part of our pathway, um, there's, there's feedback opportunities in there. There's feedback op- opportunities through our, um, through our chat room and, um, you know, community connection sort of stuff as well. So, yeah, they're basically there's guides, there's help, there's guidance to make sure you're on those processes. And what about in terms of actually winning business and selling? Yeah, so we start, everybody starts with an in, in induction. Um, it's fairly comprehensive induction. Um, I've done a few inductions in my time and this one covers a lot of ground. Um, every, everything that we do, though, of course, is supported by our help centre. So we've got, uh, we, we, don't, we don't just do sort of one-offs and then not document. So it's a lot, lot to do with the process is actually having a really great help centre of resources that you can, you can delve into and find what you need to find out at any given time. Um, so, yeah, people will come in, they'll do an induction that will involve um, understanding a whole raft of things about the way we operate, our values, you know, our, we have a success model, all of these things which are all part of the process. And then we go right down into what we call our seven steps of sales. Um, so people can actually go through that, what drives our clients, um, how to sell our sales presentation that we have um, and how to present that and why to present it in the way that we do. Um, so, yeah, we, we like, <laughs> and then so realistically you'll come in on day one and you'll do that induction. You'll move then into a training phase, which is all outlined for you with an ideal weekly time picture, um, a time picture for your day, um, high payoff activities that you know are going to lead to generating business, low payoff activities that you know you need to do but not spend too much time on, and then really go out and then practice all of those methods that we've outlined as part of our process and, and get out there and build the relationships following the processes. But I can say confidently that we have 100% success rate of getting people through our new member program our, on our pathway from zero to 350 points, which we'll talk about at another time, I know. Um, but we have 100% success rate of getting people from zero to 350 points, which is in, in our language a sustainable business, in 12 months if they follow these processes. The only time that hasn't happened is where people haven't followed the processes. And to be honest, ninety nine percent of people follow the processes because they work and they've been proven to work. But I think that's probably one of the the clear things too. We know they work because all the directors use them every day in our own businesses. So we're not just sort of writing this from an office somewhere, and you know, it's it's theory. It's it's actually real world tested daily. So that that takes me to my next question, actually, Guy. Can you tell us a little bit about how those processes were developed? Yeah, so the um, you know they, they didn't happen by accident. They happened by necessity. Um, I, I, I don't know. My brain's a bit weird, but I was really quite concerned when I first started doing real estate photography. When I'd turn up to a property and and you know that the sun might be in the wrong spot, or oh my god, this one's got amazing views. How am I going to get that? I don't know how to get that. You know, I, I've. And so you'd end up taking a million photos from a million angles. You'd be there for a huge amount of time. And at the end of the day, they'd, they'd pay for 10 images. And I might have 70 just through lack of understanding of what I needed to do and, and, and how to get it. Um, and over time as business built, um, I realised that, you know, that's highly inefficient, of course. So you get busier and you can't spend time doing that. You get better at understanding what works and what doesn't work. Um, and yeah, um, and I suppose I built that process so I could go to any property at any time, um, and always get the result that I needed. So for me, that was the capture method. That's what, what led to the development of it. So that's quite amazing. I think for anyone to see that would be quite unbelievable, to be honest. Um, you're thinking there's all kinds of houses, there's bright white houses, there's houses that are fully, you know, timber inside and dark and different weather conditions. So are you saying you've developed a process that will give us consistent quality and consistent output without changing anything on site, just shooting exactly the same way every time? So my background is an electrician, right? And 
one of the things that I was really, and I know a lot of photographers are into is gear, right? We, a lot of us are gear people. We like our, our stuff. But fundamentally, I understood and, and learned how a, a camera works. You know, I wanted to know how it works. And, and all you're really doing is collecting data or, or brightness data on pixels, right, on a, on a sensor. So if that's all you're doing, then all you've got to do is make sure you've got all of the data, right? So for, from a not not from an aesthetic point of view, not from a composition point of view, but from a being able to deal with any lighting situation point of view. Um, and there's ways to do that more efficiently. You know, you can bring flash, and you should, and and you can do you can do any number of things with that flash. But the reality is, what you're trying to do is get a really good um, set of data, which turn into raw files that then the processors can use. And if, if you can do that consistently, you can do that in any, any process and in any environment really. Um, it will require some camera setting changes um, depending on, on conditions sometimes, although we're getting better at even um, working through that as, a, as an issue as well. So if you're capturing enough data to make every room look amazing, no matter the house, no matter the conditions, is that a very complicated process? Are you going out there? I've heard of photographers going out there and having to shoot 20 shots per image, lights on, lights off, curtains open, curtains closed. How long is it taking to shoot each image? Yeah, there are other companies that run a process, but they're, you know, like you said, 20, 21 exposures, something like that. They're basically just not putting any faith in the people by doing that. They're capturing from pure black to pure white multiple times um, and, and, it, and it's really cumbersome. It's time-consuming. It takes a long time to shoot. It takes a long time to upload. It takes a long time for the processor to get work through what they actually need. And at the end of the day, they only need a very small percentage of the images taken. And that's sort of the pathway we've taken um, is to really let's understand what we're doing. Let's understand how to do it. Let's make sure we train that all the way through and let's make it as efficient as possible so we're not shooting 21 exposures to get one at the end of the day. Um, like, you know, I, I remember um, when Elon Musk was starting um, SpaceX, you know, he was basically doing this. You know, NASA would have been the, the 21 exposure people and he brought it back down to, you know, a handful of, of, of well-done exposures. And I, and I know, like, when he was looking at his radios, um, the NASA equivalent cost eighty thousand dollars, and he managed to make it in for eighty dollars. Um, same thing, same spec, just more efficient. Um, and and that's really what we try to do. And that's the whole point of the process is this, like cut out what what you don't need, cut out the guesswork, really understand what you need to do, and then just do that. Well, and also trust the professional. At the end of the day, they're on site doing the work, and. Um and so rather than making them do, you know, 21 exposures just in case, give them the, the, um, the way of doing it and, and trust them to, to capture what they need to capture. Exactly. And I think that, again, is a pillar that you are going to spend time talking about. But that's, I mean, that's the entire point of getting really great creative people. You know, you get great people as a, fa as a foundation, you teach them a process, they understand why, they want to learn the best way, the most efficient way, the tried and true way. Um, even if they were doing it a different way, the reality is to to get the result that we get and get it consistently, we need to streamline the entire, entire organisation so everybody's pulling in the same direction. So we don't have a Dave preference and we don't have a Jackie preference um, to how we capture what we do on site. You might have a creative flair and a way that you com compose and the things that you like to do which will ultimately change the end product. But the process for getting that is consistent. And does that process remain the same um, whether you're shooting a Scandi style or an Arky style or standard style? Yeah, broadly, there are tweaks. Okay. So there's things that work for an architectural style um, or a Scandi style. Um, you know, there, there's must-dos must, must -dos in that um, in terms of composition and things like that. But often camera settings are, are really similar. Um but, but it's really where you focus your time when you're shooting that on, on you know, on, on your composition that will really drive the end result. Presumably having this process on site helps the business owner, but also making sure that consistent inputs coming in helps the people who are 
uh, the studios that are creating the output as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it helps everyone. So, if you look at us in in, ter- in terms of the market and what what our RRP is, and bearing in mind we don't set any of our members' pricing, they set it themselves, but we certainly recommend pricing. Um, if If they follow our recommended pricing, often we're significantly lower priced than um, some of the bigger businesses that that frankly don't even have as good a product as we do. And that's just through efficiency of process that you can do that, right? And and it, it allows you, you know, you, it allows you to create time standards for jobs. It allows you to easily be, be better than at pricing your jobs. Um, it allows you to create products for retouches. So, you, you know, they know they can create time standards and then all of a sudden you, you don't have to, you don't have to factor in a whole lot of unknowns because realistically it, it's all a known from, from start to finish. So everyone wins and, that, and that's sort of what it's all about. So talk to me a little bit about the, um, the video process. We've spoken a bit about the photo editing process and in the last pillar we spoke about video as a product and being a really quick turnaround product, high quality. Um, video traditionally is quite an intimidating thing jump for someone who's a photographer often if you're a photographer you're quite nervous and overwhelmed by the idea of shooting video um is the video process as simple to follow as the image process look it is and and it's often a really um you know it's it's a it's a staged process if you're a photographer first you're going to want to get really clear on what you need to do in terms of photography on site and and spend time developing that before you step into video. But when you do step into video, th- there's a lot of the same rules that apply, um, the same the same steps. So, yeah, it, it does seem, I don't want to obviously give the whole game away, but g- giving the, g- getting, having that really consistent understanding of what you're doing, why you're doing it, allows you to generate a really basic video on your first go. Right, and then of course having a really high class editing team means that you don't have to learn that extremely difficult part of the process as well, um, and they can take what what you've captured as as quite basic first steps into the video world, and they can turn that into something that is extremely um, impressive um, and amazing. And then you'll actually you know you'll be given feedback from the editing team and and to improve your input um, and the cycle sort of feeds itself. Just to be clear, we're not creating cookie-cutted videos, you know, telling people the exact shots to do, right? We're just telling them how to shoot a video. Yeah, exactly. And and again, it's like how to approach a video. So you know where you're starting, you know where you're finishing, you know what you're doing. Um, and it just takes away that fear and allows for that creativity. So it might sound like you, you're telling people, you know, you must shoot window like this, must shoot kitchen like this. That's not the point. The point is, if you're doing this type of shot, right, or you maybe you're going to need the, one of these types of shots, or a couple of these, or whatever, and it, it just helps you move through. So, so you know where you're at, and you know at the end of the day when you've done your first video that you're going to have enough for it for the edit to be done and be done well. Um, so it's about clarity again, and and um, you know not just walking around in circles all day hoping you've got enough footage. I guess it's also about ease of access to these processes and having them all in one spot and under one banner, you can go and start your own business and decide this is what you want to do and you can watch a million YouTube videos that disagree with each other and talk to a million people on the internet and do a photography course and a videography course and a sales course. And if they don't talk to each other and they're not all aligned, if you're doing a photography course that focuses on, I don't know, commercial portraits or whatever, but, and a sales course that focuses on something quite separately, In this case, with what we're doing, everything is about building a specific business, offering a specific thing, and it's all in one place. And we've already considered all the varying options and arguments and and things like that. And there's one set way for everything, and they're all interlinked. So I think that's a huge time saver in, in research and arguing with people on the internet. Yeah, and look, it's not to say that the people on the internet are always wrong. You know, like there's this, I, I, I've had many conversations with people who, who you know, all aspects of what BWM offers don't really suit them and that's okay. You know, they'll go out and do their own thing in their own way and that all power to them. I'm not, I'm not here to stop them. Um, 
oh, I, I'm, I think, and well, we're, I suppose, offering a shortcut. So we're going, hey, we, we've developed the processes already. So, you know, it's, it's not to stifle your creativity. It's just to help you. It's just to save your time and save your money, save your effort, make you more money, surround you with people who can help you when you've got questions. You know, it's not, it's not about saying that you can't do it the other way because you can't. Right, it just we, we you we know you can because we've done it, but we've been doing it for fifteen years, um, and that's actually you know it's it's never stopped being tweaked and improved in that time. So whatever you start doing tomorrow, we're already fifteen years in front. Right now, you might make big leaps really quickly, and that's great. But there's been a lot of effort, a lot of time, and a lot of refinement from a lot of people to get to where the process that we have. Um. Which is interesting too, because we don't when when people come and join us, you know, we we don't compromise on all of our pillars. Because sometimes we have people who are like, "Cool, you know, I love the I love the portal, I love the idea of the community and the business development, um, and I really don't want to do my own image production, but I think what I'll do is my own video editing." Um, and and for us, that's a bit of a no no deal. You know, we if if people want to do their own thing, they can. Um, but if people want to want to sort of jump into what we offer, it's it's holistic and it all works. Like you said, it's all interlinked, um, and it all needs to be done. You know, the mentality needs to be: Hey, I'm building a sustainable business. I'm plugging into scalable solutions, right? And I'm I'm investing my time absolutely on the high payoff activities that are going to drive these outcomes. And we know from experience that when people don't do that, they don't. Like I said before, they don't reach. Um, their goals, and ultimately, you know, that's not good for them, their families, and and you know, not really good for anyone. Talk to me a little bit about floor plans. One of the right brain, left brain things that we have with creatives coming on board is that a lot of the time they're very nervous about floor plans. It's not something most people will have ever done. How do you get someone from you know being a creative to being able to do floor plans on site in a in a, a pretty quick time? Well, there's two types of people. There's people who get it quickly and there's people who take a long time. Um, and, you know, we've seen amazing creative people crying over just trying to get that side of their brain activated. Um, we've seen it a number of times, but they get there. Um, and, again, it's just about knowing where you are, knowing what you're doing and not walking around in a, in a weird random pattern in a house it's it's about approaching it consistently every single time i know dave your your process is actually you know 90 percent of the process that we use um you know you you approach the house in a in a certain way you start measuring from this point you work in that direction and you keep going um and at the end of the day you've got yourself a floor plan now that can be hard again it's it's a, a right brain left brain and i know i think we talked about it in the last episode as well to activate that part of the brain can be challenging for some people. Um, for other weirdos like me and Jackie, and I think you, Dave, we absolutely love it because, I don't know, it's right. Well, the thing is when we shoot a process, so when we shoot a, a, a photo shoot or a video and we follow a really clear process and we understand our composition, we understand our shot types, focal length, you know, or, or the whole the whole gamut, we, we know and the edit's great and then somebody says, I don't like it, right? This really can be a bit heartbreaking, but that's because all these things are subjective, but the good thing is floor plans aren't. So that can be a real relief for, for a lot of people is that to finally do something that's either right or wrong. And actually there's nowhere to hide when you've forgotten to put a door in. They're quite satisfying too. When you've done a big floor plan and it all comes together and works perfectly, it's, it's, it's like solving a puzzle. And if you, I don't know, if you're a bit of a nerd like me and you like a bit of Lego occasionally, <laughs> um, it's just, it's a very satisfying, relaxing, meditative process once you're in the zone. Um, yeah, I think floor plans get a little bit of a hard wrap. I find it a bit of a palate cleanser on site where, um, you know, you're using your creative brain and then and you do that for sort of half an hour, 40 minutes, and then you, you get to do science essentially for 20 minutes and then you're back on the creative side again. It's quite good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's how I find it. I think I actually don't know anybody who's mastered floor plans who doesn't actually like it. Um, and I know that every person in BWRM can do floor plans, mm. right? So it's it's not it's not that only some people can do it. It's just it's just those initial um, days of training that that some people will find more challenging than others, but they get there. 
But you just have to wrap your head around it. I've trained a number of contractors in doing floor plans and I've been doing that training as we've been refining the process. And I can see the difference in just the refinement of the process and certain things I'll say to them that just make a click. And I didn't know 10 years ago when I trained someone to do a floor plan and that's probably when I had more tears from contractors, whereas now there's a few little things I can point out that they go, ah, okay, I could do that and it feels good. Yeah, it comes right back down to that to that role clarity thing, doesn't it? Mm. Your waiters, your poor staff running around who've had no training and have just been told, you know, they've turned up on day one and they put an apron on and you're done. You know, they've just got no idea what to do. So they're just flying by the seat of their pants. And anybody who's been in hospitality, and I, and I don't actually include myself in that, who's worked in a really great restaurant will understand that. You know, that there's mm. there's systems, there's processes, and there's a reason for them. And then we're just doing the same thing, but in our industry. I guess what listeners don't know, Guy, although you have said it a little bit, is is how passionate you are about processes that work. It's it's quite often that you talk about a specific bakery in like regional Victoria where you just go there to watch how they work because their processes are so clear and everything runs so smoothly and you just kind of Go there a bit like a spectator. Shout out to the Mansfield coffee merchant. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I make a special trip to that cafe purely to watch their systems. I love it. Um, whereas there's other cafes where I've just walked out before I've even ordered anything because I can't bear it. Um, <laughs> I'm not rude to anyone. I just can't. I can't watch. Yeah, talk about nerdy, but it's a thing that I like. Um, and, and it's incredibly helpful. I mean, that's why we do it. It's not about it's not about me getting my weird kicks. Um, it's <laughs> it's about it's about delivering outcomes for people, and so people knowing where to spend their energy. You know, and I know we talked about this in the last episode as well, where you've got a, a, a limited number of hours in a day, right? You've got goals to build the business, whatever that is, right? We know what the HPAs, those high payoff activities, are that you need to be doing in a day, so fumbling around on site wondering what you're doing for four hours is not going to get you there, right? Be really clear and actually you're not going to get there on day one anyway. I mean, we actually talk about this a bit um, as well, the different um, phases of learning um, where effectively we expect people to come to us um, and I know this sounds harsh but go bear with me, where they're um, subconsciously incompetent. Um, or some people call unconsciously incompetent, but I've changed it to subconsciously incompetent. Um, so that means that you don't know what you don't know, right? You don't know how to do it and you don't know what you don't know. But the good thing about having really clear processes is, is you can very quickly become consciously incompetent, which is a great pl- starting place. You know, you can do that after your induction. You should know what you don't know. Um, and that allows you to then learn and fill gaps. And then over time through our pathway, you become consciously competent. So you know what you do, you know what to do, but you've really got to think about it. And then within 12 months, you'll be subconsciously or unconsciously, if you're that way inclined, competent, where you can just do the processes without thinking. Um, and that's what it's really all about. So it's getting somebody from not knowing what they don't know to knowing what they don't know really quickly, and then giving them the clear pathway from there on to to be able to do it without even thinking. And I can tell you again, 100% success rate in that um, for the people who follow the processes. I guess what excites me about that, if I think back to when I was starting out, is there's a process for every pain point specifically. So if you're not comfortable with video, there's a process for it. If you're terrified of selling, there's a process and there's almost like a roadmap to every single, um, I don't know, learning destination you want to go to, to use a terrible analogy. Um, Whereas you can do it blind, you can explore every avenue, but like you said, you can just take the shortcut. And if I'd had a step-by-step instruction on this is how to win a client, keep doing this, do it again and again and again, and eventually you'll win a client, it would have given me so much more kind of confidence in going out there and selling and and just when when it doesn't work, you kind of know, well, this is part of the process. This is I just keep doing it and then it does work. So. Yeah, I think it's a huge resource. 
Yeah, and and it really because um, because you'll do things when you're learning um, in all ma- manner of, of your business, in all aspects of your business, where you know you're doing sales or you're doing shooting, and you'll get lucky. You know, but let's talk about sales for a second. You'll just get lucky. One day you'll walk in and you'll get a job, and you'll be like, right, how do I replicate that? And you were just lucky. You were just right place, right time. You didn't really have a process. You don't know why you actually got that client, mm-hmm. right? And it could just be that the other photographers not available just drop their bundle and you're lucky, or it could be that you've you've done a series of things correctly, but you don't know until you keep doing it, right? And then you've got a, it's effectively a trial and error thing, right? <laughs> and it no no joke. In in I reckon it took me maybe three years to become consciously incompetent in my business, like three years of, of the processes to, to know actually, okay, this is what I've got to do um, and I'm still then refining and building process from there. So I didn't have them. So I, I knew what had to happen but I had to keep building and then it's probably another two years before I was um, consciously competent. So five years into the business and I reckon I could approach any sort of aspect of that business and know what to do. Mm. I mean, that's a long time. When I'm saying you can get to that point in a day in our business. One of the other things I think it's important for people to understand is the level of detail within those processes. So I'm thinking specifically of the sales process. I know I need to go out there and knock on doors, but I think a lot of people go, okay, well, I understand broadly I need to go out, but what do I say? When do I say it? How do I say it? All of those things are also available to people. And when you think about the consciously incompetent and the consciously competent and that sort of thing, I think learning those processes and knowing now that I could actually bump into an agent anywhere and they could ask me any question and just because I got those processes refined to the point where it's unconsciously, subconsciously competent, I'm very confident that I could talk to any agent in any scenario and answer any kind of question they would have for me. And I think that's huge. That's something that used to scare me a lot would, is people would say, oh, just, you know, go f- pop into some offices. But it was the idea of, well, what do I say? What do I say in the emails to them? What do I give them? So having that level of detail is huge. Yeah, that's right. And it's the expectation of what you're going to get from that interaction as well. So, you know, a lot of people with our personality type, Jackie, will go in expecting a job. You know, like that's what we're here. <laughs> We've spoken to you. <laughs> Whereas the reality is that's not how it works. So having, having a clear expectation of, of, of the purpose of that visit to that agency, it might not be in this visit that we're expecting to, to land the deal. We're just laying the groundwork to land the deal, right? Mm. And so breaking things back down like that, they make really hard and scary things like making, you know, sales to people you've never met, bite-sized, simple, and, you know, with a clear expectation, um, you know, one of our steps is is we call the drop and run. And I've, I called it that intentionally, the run bit, because, you know, it could be scary. And you, you, it's just about having a really simple point to start your process, right, that anyone can do. And you're not expected to do anything, not too much anyway. You're just expected to, to, to get the ball rolling on your sales process. And once you've done that once, you know, your heart's racing and, yeah, your heart's beating really fast in your chest and you 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 know you've got an adrenaline rush and you've done it all of a sudden you can tick that off and you can go and do it again and again and again and again and it gets easier. So I guess what we're essentially doing, and I know we kind of probably repeat ourselves a little bit, is we're taking out the fear of the unknown because we've got it all there. There's no unknown anymore. There's no fear. There's just get out there and do the things and you'll do well. And I think that's... Pretty cool. Just setting expectations broadly for someone coming on board who we've talked about, you know, is camera competent. They know how to, they know their way around a camera, but they've never been involved in real estate before. They've never done a floor plan before or, or put together a real estate video or perhaps a video at all. What would be the expectation coming on board day one to getting to the stage where they are able to do all of the product? Yeah. So with our pathway, it's really clear. So realistically, you should, within a month, understand all the, the sales stuff. You should be set up on the portal. You've done all your, you've done your induction. You've done your first member workshops and maybe, maybe a um, business development workshop in that time. Um, you've, you've read the sales manuals. You've got your marketing material. You've set your pricing and you've been shooting everybody's house 
that you know and you've been out on photo shoots with some photographers. Realistically, you can come on board, get out the door within a month, get in front of agencies at that point, keep on the grind, you know, really put in the effort and within 12 months you've hit that 350 points mark that we'll talk about and and you're away. So, everybody, that pretty much wraps up uh, pillar number two, which is process. I hope you'll have a really clear understanding of what it is that BWRM offers there and, and how, you know, you can go out and, and learn all of this stuff yourself um, and do a great job. But I think the idea that it's all been done and you can draw from, from years and years of knowledge and have a shortcut may be really enticing for some people. So, Guy, thank you for coming on to talk to us about why you find that important and how it's developed. And we look forward to chatting to you next time. Thanks, Jackie. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Guy.